X-Men 1992-97 show, animated show, season one, episode five, and this episode is called Captive Hearts. So, spoilers for these first five episodes, and another episode I love. So, yeah, let us dive right in. So, yeah, we open in the danger room. Good way to add some action. And it is relevant. You know, there is the whole thing with, you know, it sets up the claustrophobia. And Jean gets to be cool. Very, very good to see. Um, she didn't really get to be super cool in the first couple of episodes. She is in the comics. So, yeah, glad to see that. Jubilee's already let in the danger room on purpose. Yeah, I mean, it's a it's a comic book for teenagers. Teenagers want to be part of the the action, so yeah. Now, let's see. Yeah, I appreciate that Storm actually becomes dangerous to the others because of the claustrophobia. You know, it is important to keep in mind you might accidentally hurt someone you care about if you're not extremely careful. And, yeah, Wolverine has not quite rested enough. And they use it to also let him get very close to Jean. Again, I feel like that helped inspire some of that stuff in the first X-Men movie. And, and it is also, like, again, a lot of guys don't want to take the time to properly recuperate. And the love triangle is set up. And let's see. So yeah, the um, leech steals fruit. Uh, you know they they don't make a point to say it, but like yeah, it's probably literally just to eat. You know, and they're going to like they're not just saying put down the fruit and and it, no, they're like charging at him. You know, and like six or seven of them. So, you know. Yeah, if if you have to steal to eat, that shouldn't be considered a crime. Let's see. And yeah, so these are the Morlocks. And yeah, I, I forgot they appeared this early. Uh, cool, very cool to see them. And yeah, you know, a lot of superpower use this episode. Really appreciate it. You know, there's like... Five, maybe seven different Morlocks using their powers in addition to everyone, every every X Man on the on the current team in the show, and yeah, like you get a, a decent sense of what everyone's powers are. Let's see, I like the it's it's a terrible pun, but I did kind of chuckle at you know we're in a sticky situation. And, you know, the plague touches Gambit, gives him the, you know, what's wrong? Touch of the plague. And, yeah, you know, the, the one with, like, telekinet, uh, telepathic powers of some kind, you know, puts, yeah, Gene and, and Cyclops makes them, um, what's the word? Sleep! And Wolverine is caressing the picture, which, at this point, I honestly can't think of anything other than the meme when I see that. And, let's see. But, but yeah, it's it's a good way to, to show, you know, again, he really, yeah, he wishes he could be with, with Gene. And, yeah, um, we, we get the detail that, you know, Morlocks, can't pass. They even use that term, which did, was that part of the nomenclature of, I, I mean, okay, it might have been, but was that like a familiar, because like, when I hear people say someone can't pass, like, I immediately think of like, a, you know, trans people. Let's see. So, so yeah, you know, really, really great way to because because like that is it like what what do people what do transphobes want do you want them to go live in the sewer you know what exactly is the alternative to going out in public like just yeah and you know Callisto has a crush on Cyclops which you know 
she's impressed with his his fight against the Sentinels. Real quick, it did kind of feel like they were just showing off, just reminding you of really cool stuff that's been on the show. Which fair enough, you know. I, I you know, I think you get to you get to show off if what you're you know showing off is dope AF. But yeah, you know, in the you know, ultimately it does show what their different powers are. So, you know, okay. But yeah, um, she's like, she's got footage of the Sentinel fight, which already, like, who filmed that? And then it's like, these are some incredible camera angles on this. Like, <laughs> just, yeah. It's a kid's show. You're not supposed to think about it. And yeah, you know, like, when she said, you know, I, I want you... For some, you know, like immediately I'm thinking, and then she literally says to provide me an air. Oh, wow. It actually is. Which, like, you know, there's a lot of science fiction that has that kind of thing. It tends to be like a man taking a woman, you know, hostage. So, yeah, uh, that's a form of gender equality. Let's see. And, yeah, great to see Gene. Again, really kicking ass in the in the fighting, and yeah. So the the you know I uh, crap. I forget exactly who I think it might is it Cyclops or Gambit. Someone says you know Storm needs help, and Wolverine says let her ask. You know, and that is like. I feel like that's a really great metaphor for dis disabled people. Sometimes, you know, they don't, not all of them want as much help as maybe, you know, you know, obviously, yeah, anyone who asks, you should help. And, you know, if you feel like, okay, this person needs help but isn't comfortable asking, like, offer help, you know, but yeah, some, some people, you know, might be disabled, or at least appear disabled, they don't actually want help, and it is, you know, and I feel like it's, Wolverine is the exact right character to say that, because he is the kind of person who, you know, actually, I'm not sure he would ask, but he definitely doesn't want you to help without asking, and... I like the, you know, the, the telepathic Morlock has adopted Gene, which is like, you know, if you can't beat them, have them join you. So that, and, and Wolverine is like, you picked the wrong lady to adopt. And yeah, you know, once the, the Morlocks are like, okay, we might actually lose this fight, you know, they have the uh, shapeshifter, you know, look like Cyclops, not knowing that Wolverine is going to be able to smell the difference. And the, the yeah, that's a, that's a very clever way to handle that. But, you know, the, the yeah. You know, the, basically, the Morlocks are thinking, we just need to get them out of here then we can, like, make some sort of preparation so they can't get back in here. And then, I, I mean, I presume the person isn't supposed to, like, permanently and all, you know, in perpetuity pretend to be Cyclops, but, like, when they look away, you know, they're not going to watch them any, every second. You know, the Morlock is going to change back, slip back, and then they're going to be ready for them. And... Let's see. The, um... Yeah, a uh, lot of great uh, mutant power action this episode. Really loved when one of them, like, turns into, like, a dinosaur or a giant lizard or something and attacks. And, yeah, like, very tense when Plague actually attacks Gambit. And, like, at the end of the episode, he's still not quite okay. Like, they're like, okay, it's, it's amazing that he even survived. He is recovering, but, like, just, yeah. And... Let's see. Yeah, Wolverine attacking uh, Callisto was very cool, and you know Storm duels Callisto for the the 
leadership. And, you know, because it's such an important situation, she's able to, you know, apply herself enough to control her claustrophobia. And, you know, I hope nobody watched this and thought, oh, okay, mental health is just a matter of willpower. But there is some truth to, certainly you need, uh, there's a, there's a saying, I'm gonna, I'm gonna just, I forget the exact quote, but something like, uh, actually, yeah, I can't help you unless you let me help you. And, uh, you know, improving your mental health starts with accepting that you need help with it. So, you know, hopefully that's what it communicated to the, the kids. And, yeah, you know, like, it's a, it's a great, because, like, you know, if she doesn't win the fight, that's it, they're, they're screwed, and she's under a lot of pressure, including the, the claustrophobia. Let's see. But it is also basically, you know, like, if they keep fighting the way they are, someone's going to end up dead, and she doesn't want anyone from either side to die. And I appreciate the the detail that you know the Morlocks feel they they you know they can't pass, so they can't live on the surface because of the lack of acceptance. You know, which by this point in the episode, you know, a lot of the kids are going to be like, you know, that they don't they shouldn't have to live down there. And, you know, that, that detail that, yeah, it's because they're not being accepted, you know. I'd like to think that a number of kids who grew up on this show are, you know, allies of, of trans community today because of this. And, yeah, you know, at the very end, you know, Wolverine just can't bear to see Scott and Jean together. And it is also, you know, it is it is a very painful situation to be in. So he makes like a tree and gets out of there. And I think that is everything I have to say about. Ah, there's probably something else. Let's see, action wise. Um, hmm. Um, yeah, I appreciate how tactical, like, the Morlocks, you know, it's like, okay, Gambit and Wolverine are going to be very dangerous for us, let's, let's stick them to the wall, you know, and, and really, if Wolverine hadn't been one of them, like, I don't know if Gambit would have been able to get out of there, uh, you know, and, uh, yeah, I mentioned Jean, you know, getting telepathically controlled. Let's see, we have the, um, you know, and yeah, ultimately, like, Plague actually goes straight for Gambit and, and takes him out of the fight because he's so dangerous, you know, he's, he's one of the best when it comes to ranged combat, you know, Cyclops also, obviously also, but he's a captive at this point. And let's see. Yeah, and, and, you know, several of the, the most dangerous ones, you know, they try to use telepathy against Wolverine, Storm, you know, because, again, it's not very strategic to, to like, try to engage Wolverine in, like, straight combat. You know, if you, if you can avoid that kind of thing, you know, someone like Sabretooth is going to jump right into it happily because he's, you know... He's a very aggressive person, but yeah, these Morlocks, you know, they, they're they focused on their their self-preservation, so, so, yeah, and I think, and yeah, props for, for making telepathy visually appealing, you know, they're, they're pretty good at that on, on this show, that's something that I wish, I, in the movies, I get it, they're scared that people won't take them seriously, you know, the first X-Men movie came out, what, three years after Batman and Robin, so yeah, they they didn't want people to, to reject it out of hand. But yeah, you know, here, like, instead of just telling us, oh, Wolverine, you know, there was like a second where I almost forgot how awesome the show is, and I was like, 
are they really just going to tell us that Wolverine is feeling like there's, you know, scorpions? On? Nope, we're going to see it. You know, that's, yeah. And, and that's the kind of thing, like, you know, even Wolverine does not want scorpions covering his body. You know, if you, if you push it far enough, even someone who's not scared of a lot, you can find something. I think... Yeah, I appreciate uh, how much Jean uses telekinesis in this episode. I, I felt like, you know... Some of the movies did okay, but at times it kind of feels like they think, oh, she's just the telepath. She doesn't do... Let's see. I think that might be everything. I really like uh, Xavier giving Storm a chance. You know, she's like, I'm, I don't know if I can lead. And, you know, he points out we might need you to, and also, like... You know, he, yeah, he realizes she she is stronger than she thinks she is. And she just needs to remember that, basically, you know. And, and that is something, like, I, I love how much this show underlines how important found family is. Because, like, I think everyone at some point in our lives will feel like, I can't do this, I'm not good enough. And, you know, sometimes that is true, some, you know, but it's great if you can have someone who really knows you, who can help, like, if, if you just need to be reminded how strong you are, who can, who can do that for you. Let's see. You know, like, the, one of the only things that Wolverine, you know, the, the, I guess, was that the episode before this one? I think it might have been, but where, you know, they Xavier tells Wolverine, if you leave here with Sabretooth, don't bother coming back, or something like that, you know. And at that point, Wolverine does actually stop, you know. He, he might not say it out loud, but he knows he's better off with the X-Men, the other X-Men. Um, let's see, I think that might, I, right, I like that Leech, you know, the, you know, Cyclops opens his eyes and can see, and, right, and this episode is right after the one that underlined, no, Cyclops can't open his eyes without the blasts, because Rogue took that power temporarily, and, yeah, this one, you know, he's opening his eyes, and it's like, what, and then, you know, Leech, which I also, you know, I recognized him from the comics immediately, so I was like, oh, when are they going to show that he, you know, can do that? But, but yeah, and he says, you helped Leech, Le Leech helps you, you know. The, the, um, yeah, you know, the Morlocks actually only respond with violence when other people start violence with them you know when if you just if you are nice to them they are nice to you and that's a that's you know that's a it's a great message to, to you know um i think that might I will say, like, when, you know, Leech steals, like, you hear one person say, oh, he's stealing, and, you know, you kind of expect, oh, there's going to be one person, and then it cuts, and it's like, there's like five or seven people, it's like, where did all those people come from? It looked completely empty before, but, you know, it's a, it's a weekly show, it's, it's a, you know, they have to, you know, con considering that. It's actually really impressive how few shortcuts they take. Like, there's a lot of action here. I, like, I will say it's been a lot of years since I watched uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 87. I remember at least some of the time they would, like, avoid doing more action than absolutely necessary. I don't know. I, maybe it's just... It's, like, a few episodes. I think that is absolutely everything. So, so yeah, again, um, really appreciate that they managed to communicate so many great values in such a short time. And, 
you know, while, you know, even with so much action happening, and, yeah, you know, a Saturday morning cartoon, like, some of these don't really respect the intelligence of children, maturity of children, so really glad to see this one does. And that is it for this one. Make mine Marvel.